patch 13.13b has been out on the live servers for a couple of days now. Today is Monday. The B patch was on Thursday night. Shout out to the devs for being able to get that quick fix going because... By the way, some of you came to my stream on Thursday and y'all were like, Oh, they're not gonna be patched the Draven shit. Oh, they, 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 they're more dog badge. Like, you're, you're, you're dumb. You're, I, oh, more dog tweeted that they weren't gonna do a B patch. Don't expect a B patch. Uh. He said, don't expect a B patch. My stream title on Thursday was B patch waiting room because it was very clearly obvious that the meta was fucked with the Draven shit. And then you think they're not gonna B patch shit? No, no, of course not. The devs have been doing this for fucking years, man. Of course they're gonna be past this shit. This show was broken. It was not okay. It was just, it was unplayable. But now we have a playable meta where, yes, um, every lobby, there's like three people running Azir, three people running Ionia Challengers. If you're congested for your line and your level seven roll down and you don't hit, what do you do? Okay? Well, in today's video, let's talk about it because in this meta analysis, we're gonna cover not only um, other alternative lines that you can play, but also just what to do. Right on this level seven roll down meta, where like if you don't hit your units on this Ionia Challenger line, for example, if you're trying to run it, what what do you do? How do you pivot into other boards that where it feels like you know again it feels like there's not a lot of four cards you can play around. It feels like flex is kind of being punished around, right? Well, again, let's talk about it in today's video. Before we start the video, I just want to talk about this real quick. You might have noticed I didn't upload or stream throughout the course of the past two days over the weekend, and that's because uh, snapshots was actually this weekend. Uh, I didn't realize, I thought it was next week. Uh, I'm a bit of a bozo for that. But as you can see, even in this congested meta, I was still able to climb pretty high. I climbed from zero LP masters all the way up to like 330, 335 LP, I think. And then unfortunately, a couple of losses here, whatever. But I mean, hey, GM, like masters to GM in like the span of a day, like it's, it's pretty good if you ask me. So I feel like I have somewhat of an understanding as to like how to play around this meta, but let's talk about it because I feel like a lot of people are struggling, right? What is What are people struggling with right now? What is the big thing everyone's struggling with, with right now, right? It, it, it's Ionia Challengers. It's Ionia Challengers, Azir, Strategist, Lux. Everybody's running these two lines, and it feels like the meta is very narrow. And I'm not going to lie. The meta is pretty narrow. But that doesn't mean you still can't top four just because you didn't happen to hit your units on your 4-1 rolldown, okay? So let's talk about what people are struggling with, how to alleviate it, what can we do from here, okay? So first, let's talk about what happens if you are the one that's hitting. Why would we have to talk about that, right? Well, we have to talk about the control group, if you will. If this was a science experiment, this is the control group, right? If you're the one hitting, not much to worry about. 4-1, you hit your units, bada bing, bada boom, life is good. Uh, you roll down on level seven and then you're obviously not playing this shit. You're probably playing like uh, Ionia Kaisa, uh, or not Ionia Kaisa, you're playing like what? You're playing like the fucking, you're playing the Yasuo Kaisa, uh, three challenger board, uh, probably Ionia, b -b -b Karma, and like, like you know, like you know what, you know the, you know the deal, yo. Like life is good. Like this is probably you're gonna be your board at fucking level seven. This is ideal scenario. You hit the two stars. You hit the two stars. This is perfect. This is great, right? Everybody knows how to play this shit. Everybody, like probably plat and above, I would imagine, knows how to play this. This is not hard, right? The hard part is what if you're not the one hitting? This is where people are starting to struggle with, right? Let's rewind it a little bit. Let's say level six. This is three two is important. Okay, this is this is sort of the the sort of the start of the turning point, if you will. Right, level six. Most of the time, if you're playing an Ionia Challenger line, and obviously there are different lines that you can play, but this is probably the Ionia is the most common. It's sort of um, indisputably the strongest one, even though I kind of disagree with that. But I mean, that's a that's a topic for a different video. But level six, right? This is sort of your board. Usually, level six, you roll down, especially if you're playing around your level five, you just dropped the Lissandra, right? This is kind of your board. Uh, usually, it looks something like this. Uh, if you're high rolling, maybe like this. But some something of this nature, and then you roll down level six, you're trying to hit your two stars, you're trying to create a competitive board for level six. Makes sense. You're trying to match the tempo of the lobby, and if you're in somewhat of decent high elo, uh, it's going to hurt. Stage three, if you don't spike your board here. So... You roll down, try to hit your stuff. Let's say you low roll a little bit. You still hit like all these upgrades. Let's say you even hit the Ash 2 star, but you're sitting at like 20 gold, right? You will have a competitive board during stage three, but there's a problem. 4-1's gonna hit. You're not gonna have a lot of money to roll down at level seven. On top of that, there's probably at least one guy in the lobby who is gonna 3-5 it. What do I mean by 3-5 it? 3-5 level 7 is what's known as a fast 7. And in previous sets, this was something that you could do. Um, if you remember during set 7, during the Seraphine Graves meta, where people would just 3-5 level 7, send it down, try to hit everything 2 start, and then stabilize from there, right? It's sort of the same thing here, except it's revolving around 4 costs instead of 3 costs back then. You can sometimes do that if you have a large economic lead. It's not often you can get to do that, but if you're in a position to do so, you can do that and try to get the first dips on the units, right? Problem, though. 
you can't do it most of the time. And especially if you're in this scenario where, again, 20 gold at 3-2, we're trying to rebuild our economy because there's no way we're going level 7 at 3-5. We're going to 4-1 and we're going to do a roll down then. What if we get contested for our units? This happens all the time. People are forgetting their fundamentals when it comes to TFT. And this is like very apparent. For whatever reason, people think you have to hit your board at 4-1. Like you, there's like no exception. You have to hit it. There's no other lines. So what I mean by this is that people will go econ back up, 4-1, level 7 hits, bada bing, you drop, drop. And like their expectation is that you just get to play some fucking board that looks like this. Uh, and then what was the karma? Like, people expect their board to look like this at 4-1. Are you fucking dumb? Like, this, like, the expectation is this. Like, 4-1 hits, you want to roll down and try to hit everything. Maybe it's a pair of Yasuo's, maybe not a Yasuo too. But, like, this is, like, 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 this is expected. Like, oh, I'm supposed to hit this board at 4-1. No, you're not. Most of the time, if you're uncontested, you're looking at something like this. You're looking at something like this. Maybe Karma 2. Karma 2, maybe one of these to start if you're like high rolling. Maybe let, let's say it's the Shen. If you're high rolling, this is the expectation of 4 1. This is a high roll expectation for 4 1. You are forgetting the fact that 4 1, not only is the roll down like you don't have that much money to work with, 4 costs are expensive. 4 costs are fucking expensive, man. Shen 2, Kaisa 1, Yasuo 1. How much gold is that? But let the cogs in your brain work. How much money is that? 12 plus 4 plus 4. 20 fucking gold. So assuming like you barely roll and you hit all of these units, sure, you can fine. But like you want to preserve some level of economy so your economy's not in fucking shambles, right? You're not zeroing out at level 7. That's ridiculous. It's stupid, right? Because if you if you zero out at level 7, your your economy will not survive. You won't survive. You won't you won't be able to survive long enough. You have no money to work with. You won't be able to survive into the mid to late game. You're gonna bleed out, you're gonna die. Right? And if you're that guy, by the way, who's zeroing out at level seven, you're a moron. I but you're a moron. Unless you hit like if you're zeroing out at level seven, you better hit this board. Like you better fucking hit this board. You better have a good damn excuse for zeroing out at level seven. Because you are like there's just no excuse to zero out at level seven. If your economy's in fucking shambles, like what you can't do anything. People are as you climb up the ranks, people will pivot out. Because they realize, hey, this bozo over here, zero gold, can't hit his fucking units, contested by some other bozo. Like, they're gonna both hold hands, go eighth. It's it's just how it is. And in fact, it's probably happening to most of you guys right now. Because, no no flame, you guys are kind of bozos when it comes to this kind of stuff, right? And that's why we're here, right? We're talking about it. So, again, no flame. I'm, 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 we're, we're playful banter, alright? Shut up. Stop crying, alright? Whatever. Anyways, I don't care that you're hurt. Um, <laughs> what? Anyways, let's talk about it, right? This expectation is ridiculous, okay? So let's rewind it. Let's go back to the board that we were playing earlier, right? We had this Ash 2 on our board. We had this, well, we had a Lissandra and we had a Warwick 2 on our board, okay? If we roll on level 7, let's say, again, we're contested. Somebody else has all the Yassos, all the Kaisas, right? Maybe some Void player because they're playing Void for whatever stupid reason. And like maybe some guy is playing Yasuo Kaisa, right? Makes sense. It happens. What do we do? Let's say on our roll down, we roll down, we just hit like one Urgot. Let's say we hit a very early Urgot, we're like 30 gold. And then maybe we roll down a little bit further trying to find some Yasuo's and Kaisas. Maybe we get lucky. Maybe we drop down to 20 gold. We're playing a little greedy here. Hit the Lissandra too. Just fucking sit. Just sit. People are so anxious about this idea of like, oh, my forecasts are going to get taken. Oh, my forecasts are going to get taken. Just sit on this board. This is a competitive stage four board. This is, just take a moment to look. Your entire board is upgraded. You have Ionia, which is a very strong early game trait, right? And again, in this scenario, right? Very strong early game trait. Frailyard, very strong. Very strong flex. And actually, Frailyard is actually one of the best flex traits in the current set right now, right? It's, it's really, really strong. And you have an Urgot on your board. Like, this is fine. You have, like, a Zon mod that you can throw onto the Warwick. And, like, maybe you find a really Urgot too. This is really unlikely. But if you do, just fucking sell the Jin, transfer this shit over, and then just flex something here. Maybe, like, an Invoker of some type. I don't know. Maybe a fucking Galio. Who keeps the shit? Or maybe this, maybe this bitch, right? This is fine. People are just forgetting. Or actually, no, you probably want Ionia, right? Boom. People are just forgetting their fundamentals. They're forgetting the fact that they, they have a competitive board that they can work with. This is fine. Are you going to streak throughout all of stage four? I mean, unless you hit this Urgot too, probably not, right? It's way more likely that we'll probably be playing like some board that looks more like this during stage four, right? It's an Urgot one with the two gen items on here. 
because they're supposed to be our Yasuo items. You can chill on this board. There is nothing wrong with this board for stage 4. And then play out stage 4. And by the way, you barely rolled, remember? We're sitting at 20 gold lowest. Most likely, if you hit an early Urgot, you're sitting at 30 gold, level 7. 30 gold, level 7, just sit on this board. If you lose, it's like a 2-unit loss. You, you, you will probably mix streak or lose streak throughout stage 4. That's okay. And then stage 5 hits, reevaluate. You have so much money to work with, and then you can figure it out. Let's say you go level 8. Right, you go level eight, and you're still just like, look, listen, man. Like, I I lost three times during stage four. I'm sitting at like what, like 45 HP. That's a lot to work with. That's a lot to work with. Yeah, all the Yasuo's and Kaisers got taken out. Boo hoo! It sucks. It happens. Okay, how do we pivot? What's the game plan from here? You flex whatever you hit. Obviously, you might notice that like, hey, like Dead Eye is like definitely a potential like pivot that we could do here where we drop the gen we drop the like the set or whatever right we're playing around whatever we hit maybe we drop these as well and then we're suddenly like kind of set up with a lot of money a felios oh by the way a lot of four costs are taken out of the pool so the less popular ones stuff like gwen stuff like a felios these are available to us and it's very very easy for us to actually two star these four costs because so many four costs are taken out of the pool a lot of bozos are holding yes yeah, so a lot of bozos are holding kaisa like uh, and zero and locks as well by the way a lot of options that are available to us. We have like stuff like this, like the very classic uh, fucking four dead eye board, right? And this board, like we know, it's not that good in the current meta. But if you have everything two starred, don't sleep on dead eye. It can still work. It can still work. And I feel like people are just forgetting their fundamentals. And this becomes a problem, right? And you don't have to pivot into like a four dead eye board. You can still mix it up. Believe it or not, Zeri is a little, in my opinion, Zeri's a bit underrated right now. If you hit a two-star Zeri, play the fucking two-star Zeri, okay? Your biases are showing, and that's a problem, and you're not being flexible with what's given to you. You play a two-star Zeri, you play like a fucking Jace on your board instead. You have two Deadeye. This isn't like a meta board. This isn't gonna like win you out the lobby, but will it secure you a top four? Yeah. You know why? Because if you play a board like this, right? And let's say you have like the Gargoyles from earlier, you got a couple more items, you had the Ginsu's maybe because you're thinking about the fucking Kaisa, right? And then, I don't know, fucking GS here or whatever, or maybe even like Titans or GA because you're, again, trying to play around Yasuo, that's a Shoujin. Like, this is a competitive board for stage five. It's fine. This is fine. You will probably bleed out into like a fourth or a third, but that is a dub. The fourth and third, you have to be okay with going fourth and third. People just are forgetting this very classic fundamental. And the craziest part about it too is that like this board's not even weak. You keep st you're level eight. You're playing up a fawn against everybody else. And like sure, you will lose some fights. But as the game progresses, you'll find more and more units. You find more and more stuff to take onto your board. Like suddenly, this board doesn't even look that bad. It's not looking that bad. And in fact, it's actually looking kind of good. Right? So again, please, for the love of God, you have other options available to you. You're just not seeing them. And the biggest problem is that everybody's just tunnel visioning on these two lines and nothing else. So in today's video, let's talk about this. Let's talk about some alternative lines. Let's clear up the fucking fog in your mind. Because again, this is becoming a problem. Anyway, so let's talk about it. So obviously, we do have to quickly go over the meta comps. Yasuo Kaisa, it's 6 Ionia. You play 3 out of 2 challenger, you, you roll at 7, trying to hit Yasuo 2, Kaisa 2. Once you hit these two, you go level 8, you take him for challenger, usually the Warwick, and that's your board. Standard stuff. GABT on Yasuo every single time. Kaisa likes Morello, uh, Shiv, Gunblade. But surprisingly enough, um, within the stats, because of the Shoujin buff, Shoujin's actually kind of okay. This is according to tactics.tools, it's actually your BIS. Shoujin, JG, Gunblade. I mean, hey, or not Gunblade, sorry, Guardbreaker. Works for me. Um, nothing wrong with the, the old way of itemizing Kaisa, but the new way, totally fine as well. Really interesting, spicy stuff. Uh, just, you know, don't sleep on Shoujin Kaisa. It, it's actually, it actually pops up quite a lot in the data. It's uh, kind of not bad. Next, Noxus Reroll. Uh, I'm not going to go over Noxus Reroll. It's just, um, who cares? Like, we, I went over this in the last meta analysis. That's why I'm saying who cares. Um, this is just my favorite version of the board. This is the Azir line with the Noxus Azir with the Ginsu Shiv. I think this line is fucking disgusting. Uh, but it's very difficult to hit because you need the crest. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, I talked about this in the last meta analysis. So you want to know how to play Noxus without the crest, with the crest. Go watch the previous video. This is just what the boards look like. Very good. And by the way, this Warwick, it's Echo if uh, you hit the 3-star Katarina first. Uh, Warwick if you hit the Darius. Darius first, right? Very good. Uh, finally, Azir Lux. Again, I talked about this in the last meta analysis. This is like the what the meta comps back then were meta now. They're just more meta now. So we can talk about this if you want to. But again, I talked about in the last video. 
go watch the previous meta analysis if you don't know how to play these lines i go over them much more in depth there right by the way just I, again a tidbit um people are like oh against is a shit it's not true i don't know who's spreading this fake news like i know like people it's not as important as people think it is but ginsu's is still a very strong item you can still slam ginsu's it's very much fine um also azir bis is ginsu ginsu shiv okay so ginsu ginsu gunblade ginsu ginsu shiv rfc ginsu he really likes attack speed um ginsu ginsu is also really good on Aphelios. so actually if you have double ginsu i actually think it's slammable i haven't done this yet um i'm I would assume it's really good though, because the idea is is that Aphelios BIS is actually Ginsu Ginsu as well. It's um, Aphelios for those of you who don't know, his BIS, it's either, I believe it's Ginsu Ginsu Deathblade or it's Ginsu Ginsu into an IE. So this actually, you can actually flex around Azir and Aphelios and that's fine. It just depends if you hit 80 or AP items, but with buried treasures, you should be able to flex in between either or and you should be okay. So totally fine. Uh, Aphelios, it's, he's actually like kind of playable. He's okay in certain scenarios, but very difficult to hit. Anyways, moving on. Uh, let's talk about some comps that are less meta, but definitely playable. First one's Rek'Sai carry. Uh, this is Rek'Sai Lissandra reroll. I actually watched Goomums play this. Uh, I noticed in his match history, and fortunately enough, he actually played it uh, for one game. But the idea is really simple. Uh, Rek'Sai, you want to itemize with Titans, Titans, or sorry, it's Titans, I believe it's Titans double BT. This is like Gigabis, but very hard to hit. You hit the Kai'Sa in the back line here as well as sort of like this sort of, it's not really a carry. It's more of this like, um, sort of a supportive Kai'Sa actually. You notice like we don't have Challenger in, so she won't do a lot of damage, but she'll like provide help and support and with the healing for the Kai for the Rek'Sai as well, which is really nice because he definitely does, she, sorry, pronouns, definitely goes down in HP a lot, uh, especially once the Sichuan gets removed, uh, which is a bit of a problem. Um, I will say you can also itemize Lissandra as well. In my experience, you probably want stuff like Ionic Spark. Uh, Ionic Spark, by the way, one of the best items in the meta right now, or just best items in general, very, very strong item. It's usually something that looks along the lines of Ionic, JG Hodge. Really, really strong stuff. And Lissandra 3, don't sleep on it. Does a lot of damage. Really, really good. Great stuff. Uh, obviously, instead of Hodge, though, you probably want Gunblade. I know JG Hodge is a great synergy, but I think Gunblade is actually just too broken right now. I think Gunblade is actually really, really strong. Um, fun fact, actually, in the Noxus line, uh, if you look at BIS Darius, it's not even fucking uh, Bloodthirster. It's actually Gunblade, which counterintuitive, but in the stats, this is actually better, uh, which is really odd. Anyways, moving on. Um, you could also argue maybe it's Gunblade for Rek'Sai here, but because he is Bruiser, he benefits way too much out of the HP here with the double shield, so you definitely want Bloodthirster instead of Gunblade. But um, I digress. Gunblade, Lissandra, way to go. Uh, and Kai'Sa would probably want Gunblade and Morallo. Right, and then flex the third item. If you want damage, if you really want that insurance, you can go Archangels. This is really awkward because she'll barely cast, but when she does cast, she'll do a lot of damage. You're kind of just hoping she just doesn't die, but this is not a great insurance plan, so I wouldn't really recommend the Archangels here. A um, couple things to note about this comp, though. It is very susceptible to Lux's ear. It's actually decently strong against most boards. Um, it actually beats Nox's reroll, surprisingly enough, in my experience, but... Against Lux Azir, this, this comp struggles a lot, specifically because Lux Azir specializes in single target damage, and so Sejuani just gets fucking melted. Like, Lux here just laser beams the shit out of Sejuani, and Azir just cleans the fuck out of it. So, whenever you're playing this line, you actually want to position your Sejuani and your Rek'Sai opposite of the Azir and the Lux. By doing so, you dodge the laser here. Yeah, it'll, it'll start, like, fucking lasering down these units instead. Not really great, and unless you have a three-item Sejuani, it's, it's, this is a bad time. Also, just quick aside, Fucking tank items, they're they're shit. They're so shit. Um, just to explain to you how shit it is, I played a game um of Rexai Reroll, and my Sejuani items were something along the lines of like Protector's Vow, Gargoyles, and Declaw. And you would think against even against Lux Azir, this wouldn't be a problem, right? Because surely Lux does a one-shot of Sejuani with these three items, right? A two-star Sejuani. Uh surprise, it actually does. Uh it doesn't one-shot it, but this Sejuani, after one Lux cast, one full channel, it's like 10 HP. It, it's so fucking bad. Um, tank items, this set is just, they, they don't feel very good. I hope they buff them like a little bit, but realistically, they just need to nerf Lux. I don't even think tank items is a problem. I think Lux is a problem. This unit is severely like overtuned. It's not okay. Uh, but anyways, like I said before, position opposite. I did notice that when Goobums played this on stream, he did say that Rek'Sai prefers middle, which is really interesting. The idea is that you want to leave a gap in the middle here so that Rek'Sai can actually walk up through the middle here instead of going here. Um, I think the idea, there's two ideas behind this idea. Uh, I, he didn't fully explain it, so uh, this is based off what I think. Um, personally, I always position like this. And whenever I played around melee tank carries, I always position like this. Like if you remember Olaf in set seven, I think, this is how you would position it. Um, I think the idea is simple. Lux just obliterates Sejuani. 
So what ends up happening is that Sejuani dies, right? Got her. And then Rek'Sai just gets immediately focused down by Lux and Azir. Can't do her job, right? So the idea is, one, Rek'Sai wants to go into the middle. So you, you dodge all this baloney bullshit going on over the left side here. And instead gets to focus here and start working towards the middle and then work towards the back line. If Rek'Sai gets into the back line here, it's wraps. They can't do anything. Um, This fight is over, right? So your win condition in this fight in particular, Rek'Sai needs to get to the back. Um, I think the idea is is that usually the way people position is that they position their their strongest tanks on the outside, right? You want your weakest ones in the middle here to preserve as much DPS as you can, so that you can try to you know dish out some damage with some of these shitters here, even if it's just a little bit of damage. It's a it's a you know it's a it's a min max, right? I think the idea is that you want Rek'Sai to first off not start first row, otherwise it's gonna get focused. But walks up, maybe a second row here even. Um, but walks up. Gubum put third row. I don't know why. I I think he was like Zeke's here. That's why. But then he Lissandra third row, so I'm also confused. I don't know, man. Um, personally, I like Lissandra second row, but I guess she does get sort of focused down by AOE, so maybe third row is better. But I think the idea here is that because the weaker tanks are in the middle, Rek'Sai will basically go through. And then um, if these also die as well, then Rek'Sai is just free to roam into the back line. It's actually like pretty simple. Also, Lux will focus here, but then look focus here. So maybe position like this and then focus here. So again, it's it's fine. Um, I don't really know how I feel about it. I understand. I think I understand the theory behind it. But um, I mean, I've always just found more success just positioning opposite side. I think this is just way more effective. Uh, than trying to position sort of like this in the middle. You can make the argument that um, by the time this shit dies here, um, because these are basically shitters, right? What ends up happening is that your Rek'Sai, sort of this Jarvan will die pretty quickly, but then the Rek'Sai sort of, your, let's say Jarvan dies, right? Your units kind of walk like this, and Rek'Sai will actually wrap, because it won't go for the Tilia here most times, it'll actually just wrap onto the Swain here. Uh, and then this is a problem, because now, whoop de doo guess who's closer to the Lux? It's not Rek'Sai, it's... Or it's not Sejuani, it's Rek'Sai, and Rek'Sai is going to get focused down again, and then we have a problem. Um, you could make the argument, maybe you want Sejuani middle. Um, but then there's the, there's a problem where if you guess the wrong side in the fight, and it looks like this, uh, Rek'Sai is just dead. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, a lot of nuances, a lot of things to keep in mind when playing this board. Um, it's very easy to go top 4, but it's very easy to go bot 6. I, I think I've gone 6 way too many times playing this comp. Um, you stabilize really hard with Rek'Sai 3, especially if you hit it early, like during stage 4 or early stage 5. But if you actually hit the Rek'Sai 3, you, you actually don't have to worry too much about the Kai'Sa 2. This is really hard to hit. Um, Rek'Sai 3 actually stabilizes you for quite a bit throughout most of early stage 5. So if you hit Rek'Sai 3, sit on your econ a little bit. Don't get anxious, okay? You'll be fine. Um, another thing too, again, just to show you the stats, 3.25 average if you hit the 3-star Rek'Sai, and this is a 2-star Lissandra. So 3.25 average with a 24% win rate, 72% top 4 rate. It's actually pretty solid. Um, if we actually 3-star the Lissandra here, and we 3-star both, it's like, you're almost guaranteed the top 4 is 88.5%. Um, this is, uh, assuming that you're able to pivot into the board. I will say this, this board, uh, you can't hard force it. You actually, well, Kind of. If you play in the early game, you're like, I'm going to play Rek'Sai no matter what. In the early game, you're going to have a bit of a bad time unless you're able to make a solid board that preserves your HP into 4-1. This actually plays similar to, if you remember, Multicaster Reroll, what I talked about in the last patch meta analysis. Um, it... it Sonar Reroll, it's, it's a ship board until 4-1 where you're able to hit all your 2-stars. This is the same boat. Where, like, until 4-1, you got to flex. You got to play flex, play whatever you can, and then 4-1, pivot... And then you're going to want to hit the 2-star, two 2-star, two 2-star, two 2-star, two 2-star. Two and then maybe 1-star this, right? Very unlikely to hit the 2-star here. And then this is probably just a Vi instead of a Scion here. This is your 4-1 board. This is the perfect scenario. Um, until this point, you will have a difficult time trying to win fights in the early game. And actually, if you bleed out in the early game, this is not an option. Because you will start to bleed a little bit uh, post-stage like 4-5, where suddenly this board is just not very competitive anymore. Um, I will say this though, uh, specifically Malzahar, this, this unit's shit. Um, I don't know who needs to hear that. I needed to hear that earlier, like 48 hours ago. This unit is dog shit. Um, even with four, like two Sork Malzahar, four Sork is a little different, but two Sork Malzahar throughout the early game, this unit is fucking shit. It does no damage. It's terrible. Um, I would not recommend item carrying Malzahar throughout the early game. Um, you might be going like, oh, but don't you play Void in the early game? You can. But again, you can pivot into this board. You can actually do like some level of like, let's say your early game is something like this, where, uh, let's just get these off Rek'Sai, right? Let's say your early game looks something like this instead. Uh, like this. 
you can actually run a board that looks like this throughout your early game and in fact it's probably not even like four bruiser front line um this is very ambitious um i mean this is fine actually this will probably streak you throughout like most of stage three uh but you know this board is fine and i would actually rather play into rexai from a board like this and it doesn't even have to be fucking like it doesn't even have to be like this it could actually be something like this where you're just completely flexing like shurima in here with like i don't know fucking talia or some type right talia and then like i don't know maybe like an invoker like fucking what's her face actually not even talia it's probably Cassiopeia, huh it's Cassiopeia, and then it's Freljord, uh, Lissandra. You can have a board like this, and then pivot into Rek'Sai. This actually makes way more sense to me, because you, you'll you preserve a lot more HP, and you get to itemize, like, whatever your unit is. Lissandra already is on your board, but you can even do something like this, and IE Rek'Sai, it's not terrible, but, like, it's it's fine. It'll get you through the early game. You can even fucking Titans an Akshan here. Uh, it's fine. No, If you know you're going to pivot into Rek'Sai, it, it's fine. But, again... You need to preserve your early game HP or you're going to have a bad time. Really good stuff. Moving on. Akshan reroll. This board is fucking conditional as hell. I would not touch this board unless you somehow natural a Freljord emblem. I'm not even fucking kidding. If you hit a Toma Traits and you hit a Freljord emblem, you can actually hard force this comp. But without it, it's really, really tough. And I'm I'm, I'm saying this as in like, you you don't even want Freljord Crest or Freljord Heart or Freljord Soul in like 99% of scenarios. Um... It's very rare, maybe on like 3-2 if you, or 4-2 even, you hit Freljord Sword or Soul. Okay, think about it. But like, especially early game, don't think you hit Freljord Sword on 2-1. Oh, action reroll time. Ooh, yippee. Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna lose. Uh, if you don't believe me, the stats on this thing are quite honestly fucking abysmal. Um, just go into Masters Plus here, and we just go into Freljord Soul. Uh, 5.14, 5.1. It's just terrible. Again, end game, the stats are terrible, but you can actually still consider it. Uh, if your spot is good for it. I think I had one game of action on reroll where I played it. Um, and it was actually like kind of okay. But again, like even the stats here, if you have four failure or failure emblem, you're averaging a 2.7 with action on three. It's actually okay. And you can reroll at seven here. Uh, by the way, it's two dead eye, not four. Uh, four dead eye actually has a positive delta. So this is actually, it's actually, you're actually worse off playing this four dead eye here. You, you want to drop down to two. Uh, two dead eye is definitely the way to go here. But again, if we run this thing and we run it with like Freljord, like Soul, for example, the average actually worsens. It's, it's not as good. Um, I will say though, you can also try playing this weird like Lissandra Shurima emblem. Um, Lissandra three like pumps damage. This was in a Masters lobby. Um, but it actually pumps a lot of damage, especially with double Titans, and it's kind of okay, especially if you hit like the early action like I did in this game. Um. I was kind of surprised by this because, funny enough, Akshan wasn't the one ascending. It was actually Lissandra, for whatever fucking reason. Uh, but she was pumping out damage, and I, co I got completely just destroyed by... Uh, who is this? Jane? Like, her multicast board just absolutely obliterated... Or was it? Six Sork? Just melted my board. But this surprisingly won out. It's a double healing item, Bloodthirster, like... Or Zenith Edge, right? Bloodthirster, Gunblade, like, Akshan. It, I mean, it actually did all right. Um, I won against, like, Azir boards, and I won against, like, Lux boards and Kled boards. Like, it, it, it seemed okay. Uh, definitely something that you can try out. Uh, I don't think it, it's terrible. It's a reroll at 7 board, but whenever you can, you want to go level 8 and then look for the action on 3. Usually you play 4 Deadeye, and then you happen to find action on 3. But if you're rolling at 7, your, like, HP is, like, not looking too hot, maybe you can consider looking into this line, especially if you're sitting on a couple of, like, lesser duplicators. But would I recommend it? Probably not. Uh, next, let's talk about Zeri Urgot. This board, um, I think it's heavily slept on. It's really not that bad. It's a top four board. It's not a it's not a win out board, but it's a it's a top four board. And like we were talking about earlier with like the Ionia stuff earlier from before, like if you happen to find like an early Urgot and like early Zeris because no one's really picking up Zeri right now in the meta unless they're playing Piltover. It's not bad. This is actually, you might recognize this because during the PvE, Freljord Zeri was actually a bit of a thing. It wasn't as good as Piltover, not even close. But Piltover did get nerfed, Gunners did get nerfed. So this is actually kind of okay, especially with how strong Freljord is in the meta. You might have noticed that like a lot of Freljord flex is going on in this current meta. But Zeri 2, Urga 2, really, really strong. Um, Again, these are both like A tier units. They're not actually, Zeri's more like D tier. She's really not that good. But the idea is, is that basically if you miss on like a Ionia Yasuo line, right? But you have like Yasuo items, you can just do something like this. And this is fine. Urgot likes double healing. So maybe you, you I don't know, maybe you slam the Hodge instead of like double BT, which makes sense, right? But like you can play this line and still top four with it. You'll probably bleed out throughout a lot of like stage four, stage five. But you, it's like, 
it's mixed streaking a lot of the times and you're also like your losses are like one two unit losses if you run into really dirty high rollers it might be worse than that but like this is totally fine um you'd be surprised at how well this works you can actually you can even drop the sun here throughout the early game and you even run like something like a jace here um clumping is a little awkward especially with j4 in the meta but this is fine as well just make sure that you definitely itemize the zeri because if you don't you will have a bad time zeri really likes last whisper uh but because we have frailer we don't have to worry too much about it you can still get it if you need it but ginsu gs uh probably hodge these are probably fine i don't know her uh bis but it's sure enough i think it's okay um just to look at the stats again this is a very unpopular comp uh zeri ergot because as you can see this is uh not four gunner by the way uh four gunner is kind of shit so you definitely run two gunner and then you just make sure you itemize these two no matter what and then you just flex everything else um again this is a stat specifically for zeri 2 ergot 2 with three frailyard and not four gunners it's averaging a 4.25 uh 55 percentile four rate it's okay again it's not like spectacular but this will get you throughout the game if you are in a really bad spot you don't know what to do this will get you throughout the game and don't sleep on it. Uh, you might notice Invoker here is, is also on, and it's, it's actually like a decent average. Uh, I don't have Invoker on this board here because I think the idea is that if you happen to find a Rise, you just drop the Ash, and then, or maybe you can even drop Jace here. Uh, just drop Gunners or something, and then you just play like um, three failure. I mean, I kind of doubt this is incorrect. I would assume it's probably something along the lines of this instead. Um, this makes way more sense, right? But this is assuming that you hit everything, and then at level eight, you're also hitting the Ash. So that's why Invoker is probably so high up on the board. But this is a very strong board very strong board um again don't sleep on it it i don't know if it beats zero lux gonna be honest but like will this get you like a top three probably so again don't sleep on it it's 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 like i know i know zeri is kind of a shit unit but like it's fine just if you itemize ergot too you'll be okay good also quick note dude rise is kind of strong um, I accidentally found myself playing Piltover Rise the other day because I couldn't find an AP carry, but I found, like, a pair of Rises, so I was like, fuck it. Um, I played this with, like, JG Shoujin, uh, Archangels. This thing kind of does a lot of damage. Like, one-star Rise, um, it kind of pumps. Like, if, if you're kind of stuck for, like, a, uh, a, uh, uh, AP carry, uh, just, just play Rise. It's, it's surprisingly kind of good. Uh, even if it's a one one cost, it's it, it's like four or five k damage. It was Piltover realm specifically, but like Piltover is not even known to be like a lot of damage. So like, it's kind of good. It's kind of good. Don't sleep on it. Anyways, moving on. Warwick carry. Everybody sort of knows about Warwick carry. Um, there are a couple things I would just want to talk about with this comp. Uh, first off, if you don't know what it is, it's you take Ravenous Hunter. If you hit it at two one, it's basically a, it's basically an auto first. This comp is actually really really strong. They quadrupled stats on Ravenous Hunter. So Warwick is actually kind of a decent carry now. You reroll at six. You play four Challenger, three Ionia, and you are playing around this set warwick callista um and that's basically it you play zon at level six as your sixth but if you happen to find a challenger heart you can actually play six challenger and this is a very strong board um you might be going where's the kaisa uh up your mom's ass but also it's uh you, i mean you, you just substitute here but quite honestly uh i think callista 2 is probably just better than kaisa 1 you can just think of kaisa as more of a utility unit and you just slam morello's over here instead Makes way more sense and Callista is sort of like your secondary carry until you either hit Callista 3, which is, it's very uncontested, so you, you actually can find it a lot of times. But if you hit the Kaiser 2, then you just item transfer over and life is good, right? Very, very good stuff. Also Morello's. Boom. Very nice. Um, Usually the end game board though is not 6 Challenger unless you hit the Challenger heart. It's actually 4 Challenger and you play 4 Challenger for Juggernaut. Um, I was in a really high roll position where I got to play this board and I tried just to test out the lines because I had a lot of HP to work with. Um... I felt six challenger is a little weaker than the four juggernaut version. Um, I, I think four challenger, four juggernaut is the way to go if you get to play this board. It's it's spectacular. Um, again though, uh, Ginsu, QSS, BT, BIS, Warwick. You need to greed BIS. Um, if you don't, the placements actually drop quite significantly. So make sure you're getting this QSS in particular, the BT in particular, and like you get into, it could be an RFC to be completely honest. It's okay. Just make sure that Warwick is able to stack up the attack speed. And actually, fun fact, if you have a, if you have this perfect setup here with the Ginsu's um, QSS BT, you may, if the opponent, let's say, let's let's do a full board here. Let's say, for example, the opponent is running like um, the Zero Comp, but like they, they position in a weird way where they position their strongest tank not in line with the carries here, right? Something like this, right? You actually don't want Warwick on this side, on the same side as the carries. You actually want opposite. And what ends up happening is that Warwick will actually just start ramping up against this Jarvan here. And then he'll just keep ramping, 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 ramping. And then by the time this thing is dead, Warwick has like so many stacks that he just fucking goes in here. He's just like three taps the Lux, three taps the Zier. There's nothing they can do. So just a little positioning tip. Finally, 
I know this video is very long, but finally, let's talk about reroll jinx. Now, I would be lying if I said I'm confident about this one. I'm not. I have played reroll jinx a handful of times. It's surprisingly okay in the stats, um, but I I don't know. I don't know. But this is a bit of theory crafting, and I I think it's actually okay. Three star jinx actually feels kind of good. Um, the few times I played it, both were prismatic double trouble games though, so I was playing a different board than this. But um, just based off the stats, it's actually like not that bad. I had to do a lot of like stat digging to figure this one out. The idea being is that you need to hit three star jinx to hand three star warwick. So if someone's playing Ravenous Hunter in your lobby, just don't run this comp. But you're also playing two gunner, not four, because otherwise I had I had to isolate the data out of like Tristana comps and also out of Senna and Zeri, because I feel like a lot of people will play Senna or Zeri if they had like two Zon. Um, also, it's just very high roll if you find the Senna, so we're going to try to get rid of that. And like, it's a 4.6 average, and you might be going like, oh, that's like kind of low, but it's also only a 45 game sample size. It's really low because you're also not playing Piltover with this shit. Also, like Masters Plus, you can see it's actually 3.29, but there's only seven games. Um, I think I contributed, I think out of these seven games, two of them were mine, and I placed fourth in both of them. Um, so, I don't know. I, I feel like it's actually okay, but um, I mean, I never played this Juggernaut line version of it, which is, um, let me see if I can find it. Um, the idea being that if you play three star, yeah, here it is, three star Jinx and three star Warwick with four Juggernauts, the average is actually okay. And Diamond Plus is averaging a 3.7. Um, it looks like the average level 7.5, meaning that people aren't really trying to hit 8 with this board. You kind of end at level 7. Um, Masters Plus is a 3.62, but again, it's really, really low averages, so I don't really know whether or not this is actually good or not. But keep it in mind, I, I actually think it's okay. Um, the idea being is that you reroll on 6, and your 3-star war, 3-star set, 3-star jinx. In a perfect world, you hit all of these 3-stars. But the idea is, is that you are sort of playing these 2 tanks here, and jinx will just solo carry. She, again, does a lot more damage than you'd expect. So... Don't sleep on Jinx 3, I think. I, I actually think it's okay. Ginsu Runa's um, Deathblade, I think, based on what I could dig out of the stats, is her BIS. In terms of Zon mods, I feel like I would really only play this if you hit either Virulent Bioware or Shimmer. Um, I actually think... It's hard to say. I don't know if Shimmer is better than Virulent. It probably isn't. I think Virulent's probably the best one here. Um, but if you hit Virulent Bioware, I think you can actually try to play around this line. Um, if you hit any of the other mods, most of these, except for Robotic Arm, this actually got Giga buff, so maybe you play it on Jinx. But um, Chem Tank, Explosion, Adaptive, you probably want these on your Warwick. And you might have noticed Warwick is actually playing as a tank here. We're playing Warmogs, Warmogs, Sunfire. Um, you're not building damage items. And again, this is just based off the stats. Again, if we look at the Warwick stats, a lot of it is saturated and actually just um, sort of... What, what you call it? Like, it's, it's up! It's up! It goes up, right? Because of the Ravenous Hunter meta. But as we can see... Um, Sunfire, Wormogs, Wormogs, Tank, Warwick, averaging a 3.96 is actually kind of okay. Um, we scroll down a little further here, and again, a lot of this is because of Ravenous Hunter, but Tank, Warwick, 4.13, kind of surprising. Triple Tank, Warwick, 4.16. Like, these stats are fine. It, it seems that Warwick Tank is fine. It seems that you definitely want Wormogs on them, though. Um, but this seems okay. I don't actually know if you want to itemize your Warwick over your set. My guess is that if the adapt if the, the chem mod is not good for Jinx and it's good for Warwick, then you itemize your Warwick over the set. Or maybe it's just whatever you hit first here. Seems fine to me as well. Flex the last two Juggernauts. You play Juggernaut Frontline, level 70 Tech and Kaisa. This is your secondary and game carry, which is probably gonna be something like Morello, Shiv, whatever the fuck. I mean, you know what it is. Kaisa's been meta like forever. Um, again, really convoluted line to play into uh, i would love to see more people play it and let me know what you think again double trouble this board does exist i've played it um uh twice <laughs> it's uh don't take it with double trouble the gold one it's prismatic only um it's really fucking bad if you take it with the gold uh double trouble i'm gonna see if i can find it real quick i don't think i actually have it set up in my tabs here but for example jesus christ um let's say for example you play jinx three um, you don't even have to have the work in here, but let's just go double trouble here. If we go with the prismatic option, it's actually a 3.42. It seems okay. This is diamond plus again, 31 games. Like barely anybody plays double trouble jinx. It's five games. Two of these are mine. Um, but I mean, I went fourth both times. And the other guy, I mean, like with how math works, it seems that like he's actually doing better than I am with this board. Maybe it's a player diff. I don't really know. Um, 
but again, like the idea is you don't want to run the gold double trouble because if you do, you're going to have a bad time. This just averages, it's just terrible. 5.2, uh, 4.8, not great. Uh, so prismatic double trouble, you can consider Jinx reroll. I actually think it's okay. Um, especially someone else is running a uh, two-star reroll cost is really nice. In a perfect world, you want to run double Zeri because I mean, the traits fit perfectly, right? Um, this almost never happens. And I believe in the games that I played, I actually ended up playing, what was it? What is it? First game I played, I ran double Urgot. Um, and then my front line was like, two Jarvins, because I just happened to find Jarvins at level six. Um, and then the other game as well, I played like double Sejuani, and then it was like double Senna, which I, I think I got really lucky off Carousel here. But I mean, I definitely wasn't playing Senna before that. It's all right. It's all right. Um, this is sort of like a failure variation where it's sort of like, let me see if I can cook it up for you real quick. But the idea being is that like, I just found a lot of Sejuani's at level six for whatever reason. Like it's a very flex what you hit. This is a very strong test of your fundamentals. Whatever forecast tanks you find, you play that thing in the front and then just figure it out. And then I think my board was something along the lines of this, uh, like I level seven um, and that was, this was just it. This was my board and it was kind of okay. It was surprisingly not that bad. Uh, it was just Jinx or got dual carry and Jinx again pumps out a lot more damage than you'd expect. And my itemization was actually kind of poor. I had GS, Guardbreaker, Spear, Shojin. It's okay, not great. Um, kind of okay here again. I had Shojin. I, I didn't really know what was BIS. I just thought Shojin might have been okay. It sounded okay in my head. Plus they buffed the AD, I believe, on the Shojin. Um, I could be wrong on that. I, I think they did. I don't, I don't remember. But I, I mean, it seemed fine. It was it was a top four. Um, I actually streamed this game accidentally with no game audio, but um, it was kind of okay. Uh, again, double trouble stats. Uh, double trouble stats. So that's basically it. Um, try it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, I, uh, I'm probably gonna be testing out a lot more lines, uh, this current patch because just like why not? But thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. I hope this sort of opened your eyes a little bit so that you can play a little more lines because I think there are definitely way more lines that you can play in the current meta. Like just don't don't sleep on the meta. I think there's a lot that you can do. There's a lot of different lines, a lot of variations you can play. Don't sleep on the units just because you heard that they were bad. Like they're fine. They're better than you think. Anyways, take care, guys. Happy climbing.